And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Listen now to Please Believe Me, starring Joan Loring and Robert Reddick, and written especially for suspense by Ben Kagan. There it is. Oh. Your new home, Mrs. Cooper. Furnished by Louis the First. That's when he comes around for the rent. <laughs> oh, Tony. Oh, Tony, it's charming. I'll bet you say that to all your new husbands. No, I mean it, Tony. It's so casual. Bohemian. Yes, it could use a cleaning. Oh, silly, I didn't mean that. Well, anyway, you'll find it all very compact. Living room, bedroom, kitchen... It's exactly as I imagined it would be. Easel, paints, and brushes. Large window. Oh, Tony, I still can't believe it's true. Just think, if I hadn't gone to that exhibit three weeks ago, and if it hadn't rained that afternoon, we would never have met. Probably not. Three weeks? Is it possible I've, I've known you only three weeks, darling? Does it seem possible that three weeks ago we were total strangers? Well, it's this new atomic age, my dear jet propulsion. In three weeks, you can go around the world twice, make a million dollars. That's what I tried to tell the family, but... Oh, you know how families are, especially if they happen to have been bo- born and bred in New England. Julia, they hate me, don't they? Oh. They think you've made a terrible mistake. Of course they don't. They... Well, they only said we should have waited, that I should have found out more about you, but, oh, Tony, they'll come around. Really? When? In time. I promise, Tony. They're really very nice underneath. Yes, you're in the mood for excavating. That's not fair. They have a point of view as well, Tony. Oh, now, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean that. Please believe me. I realize what a shock it must have been when you told them you were marrying a struggling artist without a family tree. They probably think I'm a long-haired anarchist with a bomb in one hand and a dagger in the other. Oh. Ready to take advantage of their unspoiled, unsophisticated project. That's not a bit funny. And I'm sorry again. Cigarette? Thanks. Tony, why did you marry me? Well, I told you, Julia, I needed a model who wouldn't charge by the hour. I know I've asked you this question before, but I'd still like to be sure. I'm going to be frank, Tony, with both you and myself. I know you didn't marry me for my accomplishments. I'm just an ordinary girl with a mediocre oh, mind. Oh, now, Julia, please. Well, it's true, Tony. I, I know, too, that you didn't marry me for my beauty. I'm fully aware of the fact that I'm quite plain. Some have even said homely. Oh, now, Julia, stop that. But you, you're handsome, suave, you're sure of yourself. We just don't match up. Why did you do it, Tony? Tell me. Well, if you must know, my dear, I married you for your money. That annuity that you told me you had. If anything should ever happen to you, I'd be secure for life. Oh. Oh, now, darling, don't tell me you took that seriously. Of course not, darling. I'd like to see the rest of the apartment. No, that's all there is, remember, except for the view, of course. Uh, You can look over the entire city. Come here, I'll show it to you. No, I, I... I'm afraid of high Tony. Please. Well, you'll have to get used to it. Unless you want to keep the shades drawn all day. Come on, now. Just no. take a peek. I'll hold on to you. No. No, Tony, I'm afraid Oh, to... don't be silly. That's nothing but a state of mind. I... Now, Julia, you'll have to get rid of this morbid fear. And the best way to get rid of it is to take the plunge. Uh, Come on, Julia. Just one more step. Just one more. Tony! Tony! Darling, you must be careful. You tripped over the rug. Yes. It was clumsy of me, wasn't it? I'm ready, Tony. That's good. Tony, I'm leaving. Oh? Well, have a nice time, Julia. You sure you won't change your mind? About what? I'd like you to come with me. No, no, thank you. But they'll think it's funny, my going up alone. Julia, you know very well they won't think anything of the kind. They don't want to see me any more than I want to see them. 
Besides, I hate Connecticut weekends, especially with your family. But they're my parents, Tony. I mean, I haven't seen them in over two months. Mm. Oh, Tony, what will you do while I'm gone? Well, I don't know. Work, maybe, or sit in the park, or get drunk. Oh. I'll give you a full report, providing you do the same. Tony, I wish you wouldn't carry on like that. I wish you wouldn't make everything so unpleasant. No, I didn't realize that you were so unhappy. What's happened to us, Tony? Ever since that first day, we've been bickering over the most trivial things. Well, I'm glad you consider them trivial. But they are. I don't even remember what most of them were. If, if you really loved no, me... you we... don't believe that either. I don't know what to believe. You are so moody, so unpredictable. Julia, I... I cannot change myself any more than you can change yourself. That's the way I am. That's the way you'll have to take me. I know, and I want to, except that... There's something that I can't get out of my mind. Something you said that first day... No, never mind. Forget it. We'll talk about it some other time. No, why not now? Why not get it settled and no, done with? No, no, I'm, I'm late. Julia, but... you have over an hour... Now, what were you about to tell me? Nothing. Oh, Tony, I must go. I'll have to find a taxi. Julia, you are evading the issue. No, Tony. You're hurting me. Let me go. I'm sorry you did that, Tony. I'm very sorry for you. Tony! Tony, I'm back! Oh, darling, I could hardly wait for the weekend to be over. I counted the days. Then I, then I counted the hours and then the minutes. The house was full of all kinds of people, but I felt so lonely I thought I'd die. Did you miss me, Tony? Was it terrible for you? Yes, terrible. I'm glad. I'll never leave you again. I couldn't bear it. What did you do while I was away? Did you... Tony, you've been drinking. Well, what if I have? Any objections? Do you disapprove? No, I... Well, I... I'd better put my things away and start yes, to... Well, pay... just a minute. You haven't told me. What did you do, Julia? Oh, I... I sat mostly. Talked. Oh, really? About me? Yes. Then what happened? Did they try to make you leave me? Of course. Julia, not. I want the truth. What did you tell them? That I hadn't sold anything in over a year and that you were supporting me? No. That I drank too much? Found all kinds of excuses for not getting to work? Tony, I didn't. You know I didn't. Who was there beside your parents? Where did you go? Boom. What? I... I want all the details, Julia. I want a full report. Tony, stop that. You're spoiling everything. Am I? Still being childish, I suppose? No. Now you're being despicable. Oh, that's a very self-righteous, very virtuous attitude. A perfect cover-up for present and future extramarital... Tony, if you say another word, I'll... Oh, it hurts, doesn't it? Julia, dear. The truth always hurts. What? Now, come on, darling. I'm interested. I'd like to know how they make love in Connecticut. What? I'd like to find out if it's more romantic than in a New York studio. Why are you doing this to me? Don't you know why? Or is it that you think I'm a stupid, unseeing cuckold, a long-haired, impractical bohemian who is unaware of anything going on around him? What are you... Perhaps you believe that you can buy me with your annuity. You... That I'll only be too happy to look the other way so long as you pay me regularly. You are a louse, Tony. You'd go to any length. Yes, to... yes, yes, to any length. Even to opening one of your letters. What? Came for you last Friday. Maybe it was Saturday. What? Well, it's from Jim Copeland. <gasps> Shall I read it to you? No. Well, why not? It's so beautiful, so touching, so full of sense. How dare you open my mail? How dare you? Well, I had a lot of time on my hands, Julia. Time and devouring curiosity. Now, it's a perfect combination, I'm sure you'll admit. For 24 hours, it lay on that table, propped against the lamp, flirting with me, imploring me to look inside. And as you see, the results were gratifying. You are a fool. 
Jim Copeland is an old friend. He's nothing more than a friend. He means nothing to me. Oh, but you mean so much to him, darling. So much that he dropped everything from very pressing business just to be able to spend the weekend with you in Connecticut. Isn't that right? He... Mother told him I was coming up. I had nothing to do with no, it. Did Mother also tell him to address you as darling Julia? Did she tell him to write that he's still very fond of you? And if you should ever change your mind, he'll be there waiting? Oh, was it your mother who met him for cocktails last week, or was it you? Well, answer me. Tony, you're twisting everything. Oh, I am twisting. Yes. Well, look at it. Because it's right here in black and white in his own meticulous handwriting. No, Tony, it doesn't mean anything. Doesn't it? No. I want the truth, Julia. I am sick of your evasions. And I am sick. Sick of you. I'm sick of everything. I won't put up with it. I won't have you spying on me. I won't. I won't. Julia, do it. where are you going? Leave me alone. Now, Julia, listen to me. <laughs> now, I admit that I jumped to conclusions. That's why I've been acting strange. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. Now, please, believe me. I can't seem to get to work. I've been accepting your money. Oh. I keep thinking about that constantly. But you shouldn't. Tell me, I don't mind. I know. You're sweet and you're generous, but I would like to do something for you for a change. I'd oh. like to take you out of here, give you the things you want, buy them with my own money. Tony, I don't care about that. It doesn't matter. No, but it does to me. But it'll be different from now on. Please believe me, Julia. I'll get to work. I'll start on your portrait tomorrow. Oh, Tony, if you only would. I promise, Julia, tomorrow without fail. <sighs> now, you just sit down and let me get you something. You must be starved. I know I am. I'll fix lunch. No, 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 no. You sit right here and relax. I'm all right, Tony, if you insist, but I... What's wrong with his chair, Tony? One of the springs must... Oh, it's a book. Give that to me, Julia. What is it? Well, it's just something that I've been reading. It's not important. Give it to me. Wait a minute, Tony. This is a book... on poison. Yes, yes. I, um... I picked it up in a second-hand bookstore to pass the time. Now, Julia, you put it away and relax. Because everything is going to be all right from now on. I must find out. I must. I must call the pharmacy. Prescription number is on the bottle. Oh, why don't they answer? Why don't they... Hello? May I... May I speak to the man in charge of prescriptions, please? Yes, well, I, I'd like to find out about a prescription you filled for me yesterday. My husband picked it up. Julia Cooper. Oh, the number, yes, it's 8472. Yeah, Dr. Bierman. Yes, well, I'd like to find out what the ingredients are. It's supposed to be a sedative, but I feel very weak. And I... Oh, well, six pills since last night. Yes, would you please and hurry. Tony will be back soon. He'll walk in any minute. Oh, I wish he'd hurry. I wish that man would hurry. I can't stand. Hello? Are you sure? No, no, are you sure? It isn't. It isn't poison. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, I will. I will. Goodbye. He's lying to me. They all are. No, I know what happened. He switched prescriptions. That's it. He went to another pharmacy and substituted one bottle for another. I must find out. But I have to get help. Hello? Will you connect me with operator 3-2, please? Yes. Yes, long distance. Maybe I'll recall the police. Maybe. Hello? Is this operator 3-2? Will you please try that number again in New Haven? You were supposed to let me know. Julia Cooper. 
Hello? Jim. Yes, this is Julia. Oh, Jim, I'm so glad I found you in. Yes, I got it. Oh, I can't talk to you about it now. I don't know. Jim, please, I... I'd rather not discuss it. I, Jim, I, I must hang up. I hear him. Tony, yes, I, 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 I will. Maybe next week. Goodbye. Tony? Tony, is that you? Tony? I could have sworn I heard that door. Tony? <sighs> Tony. What's the matter, Julian? You... You've been standing there all the time. No. No, I just came in. I... I thought you were asleep. I didn't want to wake you. Don't lie to me. You've been standing there all the time, listening to me, listening to every word. You've been spying on me, snooping. Oh, now, Julia, please believe me. I told you I just came in. No. Now, please, darling, you'll make yourself sick again. <laughs> Remember what the doctor said. You mustn't excite yourself. No. Now, please lie back no. and I'll get you. Some... Don't come near me. Leave me alone. I hate you. I hate everything about you. Your constant whining about not having any money of your own. Your tirades about being dependent on me. If you were any kind of a man... You would stop whining and do something about it, but you're not. You never will be. Oh, Julia. Don't look so hurt, so noble. I hate that about you, too, your hypocrisy. You don't love me. You never did. All you wanted was my money. Oh, Julia, now you must stop that. You're overwrought. You're oh. working yourself into a breakdown. Oh, am I? Didn't you plan it this way? Isn't this what you wanted to happen? No, no, of course not. You're nervous. You're upset. Oh. I never should have let you sit for me today. It tired you out. Now, oh. please lie back and try to get some sleep. Oh. Please, Julia, you're very tired. Yes. Oh, yes, I am very tired. I'm so weak. That's right, darling. There. Oh. Now I'll get you a pill. Oh. Here you are, Julian. Oh. Take this and you'll feel much better. What? You'll go right to sleep. What? Take the pill, Doc. No. No! doing? Why are you packing? I'm leaving. I'm leaving you for good. I won't stay here another minute, and don't you dare try to stop now, me. Julia, darling, what's gotten into you? What do you expect to accomplish? Nothing. I just never, never want to see you again. I want to go back among people who are decent and normal. Tony, don't you dare come near me if you try anything. I swear I'll... I'll hit you with this lamp. Julia, I want you to tell me why you're doing this. I want you to give me a direct answer. All right, I'll tell you, Tony. You thought I was stupid, that I would never catch on, but I have. You weren't joking that first day. You married me for my money and nothing else for my annuity. And ever since, you've been trying to kill me. Oh, you're out of your mind. First it was the window. You tried to push me out. And then the poison, but it didn't work. It didn't work in either case, and it won't work anymore. Julia, you're suffering from hallucinations. It's no use, Tony. It won't work any better than your other schemes. What schemes? What schemes, Julia? I know you, Tony. I know you better than you think. You're going to try and call the doctor and tell him that I've been acting irrationally. You're going to declare me insane, aren't you? Lock me up in an institution and then the money will be legally yours. Julia, you are insane. It oh. must be to dream up something so fantastic. Don't pretend to me, Tony. Don't lie. I hate liars. I know your plan. I heard you talk to her. 
You heard me talk to whom? You thought I was out. Away. Well, I wasn't. If you can spy on me, I can spy on you. I can eavesdrop, too. What are you talking about? I am talking about Gina. That's who I'm talking about. Isn't that her name? Aren't you plotting this whole thing with her? Deny it. I dare you to deny it. I won't even bother. You're completely irrational. It won't work, Tony. Not in a million years. No matter what you do or say, you will never get the money. Never. I have written to my attorney. I wrote him yesterday, cutting you off. So you see, I'm about smart as you after all, you and your Gina. Is this the letter you have in mind, Julia? Tony? Where did you... I found it in your purse. You? You're rotten. You're rotten through and through. Well, I want you to know why I took it, Julia. I suspected you'd try something like this, something you might regret. Me? And I wanted to give you a chance to reconsider. You're horrible. You're a monster. You would stop at nothing to get what you want. Oh, please believe me, Julia. I'm not trying to get what I want. I'm sorry if you think so. I'm sorry that your mind has become so warped with hate that you can't see anything clearly anymore. Here, Julia. You can have this letter. You can mail it now if you want to. I won't try to stop you. You please believe me. I have no intention of stopping you. You don't... Well, take it. Oh, no. No, this is a trap. You're trying to trick me. Oh, don't be a fool, Julia. Stop dramatizing yourself. Take it and get no. out. No, no, I won't. I won't. I don't believe you. Very well, then. Oh, no, I was right. I was right all along. You were trying to trick me. But you can't prevent me from going through with it, Tony. You'll never prevent me again. Never, never, never! Julia, where did you get that gun? <gasps> Why, Julia? Why did you do it? Because you were trying to kill me. You were going to put me away. You tried to poison me so you and your girlfriend... No, Julia. The poison you speak of was of your making... Please believe me, you never really liked yourself, so you couldn't believe that anybody could possibly love you. No, that's not true. Give me the gun, Julia. I'll say it was an accident. No, no, stay away from me. Give it to me. Give it to me, Julia. No, no. Don't come any closer or I'll shoot again. I warn you, don't touch me. Let go. and written especially for Suspense by Ben Kagan. Suspense is produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Listen again next week when we return with Friday, written by Jonathan Bundy, another tale well calculated to keep you in Suspense. 
Bill Rizzuto Sports Time scores for the fans Monday through Saturday on the CBS Radio Network.